public instead. Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? The women with the least likelihood of getting pregnant are the ones most worried about having abortions. On January 6th of 2021, you had tens of thousands of people peacefully protesting. So, it's not a right-wing conspiracy theory. It's not QAnon. It's real. <laughs> hey, folks. It's Rick Wilson, and welcome back to the Enemies List. Today's episode is just me. They're, they, the, these fools, they, they're just letting me do this without adult supervision. It's crazy. But welcome to the show. Today's enemies list is two things. One, some enemies list content of people who have pissed me off over the weekend. I mean, and that, that list is long and distinguished. Um, and also, we've got some questions from readers, which we're going to make this a more regular segment now, where we answer reader questions, because folks have sent in a lot of smart questions. And unfortunately, I have not uh, done this more often. We're going to do it in the future. Um, the backlog is enormous. But the world has changed a lot since some of the other questions were asked. So, folks, send them in. Send them in. Info at therickwilson.com if you want to send the questions to me directly. And we will get them on a future show. All right. So, folks, <laughs> I have three big things that are on my on my list right now of people who are fucking up America, people who are breaking our democracy, people who are bad actors, bad characters, bad, bad dealers, shady low bastards. And I, I hate to kick, uh, kick, kick, you know, a guy when he's down, but with Tesla stock price eating a, a, a giant one over the last week or so, but Elon Musk of all the other shit he's done to Twitter of all the other stupid things he's done to Twitter of all the bad outcomes for, for what was a, a, a flawed, if robust social media platform, Almost nothing compares to where he's been in the last couple of weeks. And it, and it really peaked over the weekend when he shared an AI-generated video of Kamala Harris putting words in her mouth, um, saying things that she's never said, um, making assertions she's never made, claiming beliefs she doesn't have. And we've all known that, that deep fakes and, and, and AI were going to eventually reach a point where they were virtually indistinguishable from reality. Now, we have, uh, when we do an ad using AI, we disclaim the entire ad. It says, this ad is generated by artificial intelligence. This voiceover or this effect or this video, because that's the right thing to do. Now, this ad was not generated by, uh, by people of goodwill. This ad was not generated by people who who uh, really care about disinformation, although they howl about it all the time when they feel like they've been been slandered in some way. But Elon did this um, in a way that was very deliberate. It was very, it was very considered how he did it. He knew exactly what he was doing. He knew precisely what would happen. This was going to be a, a fake ad that went out to, cause people to believe something that is utterly false. He knows it's false. The people who generated it knew it was false. And unfortunately, what this does is it leads us not to a world where people say, oh my gosh, Elon, you've made a terrible mistake. You shouldn't have done that. But instead, because he is a craving black hole of need and approval from the incel red pill dipshits on the platform who pay him $8 a month, he'll do it again. And he's got an enormous footprint and he's, and he's using the algo at Twitter. I will bet you a thousand dollars to the charity of your choice. Elon's thumb is on that algo to elevate every one of his tweets. So this piece of, of trash video, this, this disinformation video, it spread extremely quickly. And the reason it spread quickly was that he wanted it to, he wanted to misinform people. He wanted to move a, a set of fake ideas into the political dialogue. And the, and the fact of the matter is, while it's his platform, 
if he wants to to posture himself and believe he's the free speech advocate and he's the guy who's going to, you know, fight back against the libs, there's a point where where the paranoid fantasy of what he believes the media is has influenced him to the to, to a degree where he's become completely deranged. This is this is batshit crazy. If you do this, if you go out and say, um, if you go out and say that that Donald, if I if I went out and said, let's put it this way, if I went out and made an ad that that had Donald Trump saying, I enjoy masturbating while looking at pictures of Dr. Ruth or whatever the fuck, right? It didn't. It doesn't matter what it would be. I enjoy, you know, mud wrestling with J.D. Vance every every other afternoon, um, you know, uh, uh, whatever it was. Pudding fetish. I don't care. That's actually Jason Miller, but that's a long story. Um, but the idea that people will be disarmed in this and there will not be and there will be unilateral disarmament on one side or the other is wrong. This is a stupid thing to do, like using nuclear weapons. It's stupid. This is now a political nuclear weapon. Elon has engaged in first use. The difficulty here is it will get harder and harder to know what's real. It will get harder and harder to judge what's real. As I wrote in in, uh, Running Against the Devil, we will reach a point where deep fakes are so good that the experts and the algorithmic ways of trying to detect the deep fakes will be insufficient. We're pretty much there. And Elon Musk had a choice. He made a choice. He put himself on the enemies list by being an absolute a-hole by sharing this thing. And and look, it, he's got a lot of things in his brain that are broken. He's got a lot of things in his brain that are fucked up. Um, and, and, and he's got a lot of things where we fundamentally disagree. But I'm going to stick with, with Elon in one way. Actually, did something right this week. I, I, I know you're shocked because this is the enemies list, but he actually did something right this week. He called out today, in fact, when we're recording this on the 29th, uh, the massive election fraud in Venezuela. Now, the second person on my enemies list is, of course, Maduro in Venezuela, because Maduro is a dictator. He is a guy who uses his secret police. He is a guy who has suppressed a democratic uprising in this country. He's the end point of a 25-year authoritarian uh, regime that started with Chavez and will end with him if the world is if the world is a, a fair and just place. And when we look at what's happening right now, where do you think he learned it? Maduro lost the election. He knows he lost the election. Everyone else knows he lost the election. The numbers uh, outside of polling places, the numbers in the exit polls, the numbers in the pregame polling, the numbers that everyone could possibly derive have shown that Maduro got blown the fuck out. And yet, he claims to have won. And the AP this morning, not their best moment, guys, said, Chavez is or uh, Maduro is declared victor. Well, yeah, Maduro is declared victor by Maduro. So, folks, it's important we look sometimes outside of our own borders at the effect and the influence of the actions that Donald Trump had in the world, not just on our country. Where do you think Maduro learned this lesson? Where, where, where do you think he saw a shining example of getting away with declaring an election to be uh, decided in his favor? It's from Donald Trump. He learned from the master of this bullshit. He learned this from Donald Trump. He learned this from watching Trump in America get away with not going to prison for trying to steal an election. He's learned this by watching the American Supreme Court give Donald Trump almost complete legal immunity from any sanction about trying to steal an election. And here's the thing. Trump's got a lot of people around him who are like, you know, we don't like Maduro, like people like Marco and some of his Florida people. But there's a part of Trump that looks down at Maduro and goes, very well, very well done, my son. You've, you've learned from the master. And 
there's no excuse whatsoever for Americans accepting a fraudulent election in Venezuela, just as there was no excuse for Americans to believe that a, that, a, that 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 they were going to have to accept the fraudulent election claims by Donald Trump in America. There's no is there no necessity for it. We live in a smarter, better world than that. But Maduro has declared himself the victor. He is a guy who is on the enemy's list on a semi-permanent basis because like all authoritarians, he will always abuse power. And and that abuse of power is something I'm going to talk to you about also. To go to our next favorite topic of the enemies, list, Donald Trump. This weekend, I'm sure a lot of you saw it, Donald Trump was giving a speech to a bunch of evangelicals. And he said, just get out and vote. And then you won't ever have to vote again. Was he talking about like, he's just going to take care of everything they needed? No. This is what Donald Trump really believes. And this is what a lot of them believe because they believe they are in this, this, this end time. This, this, this rapture is approaching for them. And Trump believes it deep in his dark, ugly, savage little heart that if he gets through the next few months, if he manages to squeak this thing out, if he manages to get this thing done, that somehow, that somehow, he will retain power until he dies. I know he does. He believes that at, at a lot of the philosophical underpinnings that have been taught to him by Steve Bannon and that are running around like wildfire on the right these days is that it's the end of democracy. It's the end of the republic. That we need strong leaders, a man on the white horse, the Donald Trump, only I can fix it bullshit. And I will tell you, watching that this weekend, Watching him make those remarks this weekend was, to my mind, the mask really, really slipping. And that mask slipped because he said, you won't ever have to vote again. It'll all be taken care of. The folks that are hearing that message are folks who do not believe in America. He doesn't believe in America. But they don't believe in voting. They believe that they need a, a dictatorial figure, an authoritarian figure, an autocratic figure who is going to do what they're bidding, who is going to take care of their, their deepest political needs. And when you've got a guy who's been out saying, I'm your retribution, I'll be your revenge, I'll be the one, the dictator for one day. And again, to point out something that's glaringly obvious, no dictator is ever a dictator for one day. They just don't happen that way. They stay in power because once they seize it, they never relinquish it until they're st stood up against a wall like the Ceausescu's or, or stepped into a noose like, like Saddam Hussein. Dictators don't want to give up power. They never do. So this idea that Trump went out this weekend and just pulled the mask right off, he just didn't fucking care, guys. He doesn't care at all. He, he's going to be on the pinnacle of the enemies list probably forever. Because he's willing to say things like that, and and he's willing to believe things like that, and he's willing to sell that idea to people who believe that he will deliver it for them. A good president, a real president, an American president would never, ever say something like that. He would never even entertain it. He would never even open the door to that kind of bleak, terrifying, dystopian dictatorship idea. But here we are. Following that, as a correlator to that entry on the enemies list, you know what? That, that story did not get a ton of coverage. It should have. should have been the front page of every goddamn newspaper in America. Trump declares end of democracy. Trump says no more voting. That should have been the, the headline. That should have been the big, big, big sweeping headline. And a lot of papers covered it a little bit, gave it a little bit of like, Trump said, Democrats responded. And, and that idea that, that everything is baked in the cake with Trump, that everybody knows that about Trump, that, oh, why should we even bother? Da, da, da. Every, every single time I have a conversation with a reporter who tells me everyone knows that, or everyone believes that, or it's all baked in the cake, or that's just Trump being Trump, or that's just Trump playing to the audience, or he doesn't really believe that. 
it makes my brain want to explode. It makes my brain want to hemorrhage because Donald Trump does believe those things. They know he does. And I, I the only reason, and you guys should should just be really clear on this, the only reason there's a little bit of a change in the coverage tone on Trump right now is not because they believe Trump is a bad guy. It's not because they believe Trump is evil. It's not because they acknowledge that Trump is the preeminent threat to the American Republic and to the future of representative democracy in this country. The only reason it's changed a little bit is because a lot of them think Harris is going to win now. That's the only reason it's changed. And that's a pretty bleak reason. And I'm not one of these guys who says, all journalism is access journalism. It's not all access journalism. There are great journalists covering Trump, a lot of them. But this idea that Trump doesn't need to have every word scrutinized because it's an act or a show or, or whatever, that defensive of, of you know, authoritarians has played out with sad results time and time and time again. So uh, finally, one more thing on the enemies list. Fuck all of y'all. Uh, who scream out, Russia, Russia, Russia. Oh, it's a hoax, the Russia hoax. As we have learned once again, now that there are public interviews with the lead analyst of the 2017 Russian interference report, it was never a hoax. Russia wanted Trump to be elected president. They did the things that they could do by spending money, by influence operations, by influencing people, by influencing coverage. That was always there. We yelled and screamed about it. We jumped up and down about it. We told you about the context that led back to Russia over and over again. It's Paul Manafort, Michael Caputo, all these people around Trump. Private meetings with Don Jr. and Russian reps of people who worked for the Russian government. If it is what you say it is, I like it, especially for later in the summer. Russia was always trying to play a role in our elections, and they're planning to play a role in our elections right now. They're still on this game. They're still trying to play this game. They're still in the fight to influence America's election. Don't mistake it. The FBI is rolling up Russian botnets all the time. If you see a guy who's a verified Twitter account with 42 followers who joined in, in June of 2024, um, and, and he's talking about Ukraine, but his, but his Twitter profile says, American Patriot Veteran 182A Christian MAGA. It's a fucking bot. They are still working the angles on this. D Vladimir Putin knows that if Donald Trump is elected, he wins. Don Vladimir Putin knows if Donald Trump is elected, that the minute that, that result is called, he rolls tanks into Kiev as quickly as he can. He, he wins. He knows if Trump loses, he's going to get thrown out of a window. So folks, I'm for the Vladimir Putin thrown out a window and Donald Trump losing party. How about you? So that's it for this part of the enemies list this week. We are now going to jump over to user and listener questions. And I got a couple of good ones. So a friend says... <laughs> I was at the Trump Bitcoin event this weekend, and the biggest line of applause was when they wanted to fire Gary Gensler. Folks, I don't think Trump knows what Bitcoin is. I, I, I don't think he has any clue what the blockchain is. I don't think he has the slightest conception of what, what crypto is, means, or, or does or could accomplish. I don't think he knows any of that stuff. But what I do think is that Trump has seen um, that he needs to build out a bigger coalition than he had. He needs help anywhere. He needs something anywhere. And, and he needs a, he needs a, a savior. And he discovered that a lot of the Silicon Valley bros that were introduced to him by Peter Thiel and David Sachs and Elon Musk and all these other people, they love Bitcoin. Why? People like Mark Andreessen are heavily invested in Bitcoin. They need Trump to come in, deregulate, okay? They need him to come in and deregulate the system. They need him to come in and undo the guardrails. They need him to come in and let them have 
Bitcoin not as a means of exchange, but as a massive fucking Ponzi scheme. That's that's why the Bitcoin idea, folks, is so like hot. It has Trump and uh, and a lot of his tech, uh, you know, brolagark fanboys so hot and bothered right now. Um, and and look, I, I'm sure it was a deeply weird experience. I have no doubt that it was a deeply weird experience. Um, but but. Uh, you know, the, that's why Trump is doing it. He needs the money from these people. He needs to feel like he's got a he's got a a, a, a new revenue stream for not only for himself, but for his campaign. And, you know, honestly, it's probably working for him pretty well. These people are are these people are looking for someone to help make their investments they've made in Bitcoin over the years. Um protected by by the government rather than pursued by the government and look i'm not into bitcoin uh, if it, uh, i do believe the blockchain is is essential and a, and a really good thing um but but honest to god guys this is this is trump going to a bitcoin conference is pretty much peak 2024 at this point all right <clears throat> next question how do we handle the rising tide of disinformation on the internet? Uh, can't really know what to believe anymore. I can't really buy, um, you know, real or fake. I can't tell. And fuck, this is exactly what I was talking about earlier. Um, when you have in your social media circle a person like Elon Musk driving fake content out on the onto the internet, we're going to have situations like this. We're going to end up with moments like this where people can't trust their eyes, where people can't trust what they read. Look, right now there's one guy in Russia as uh, a former sheriff's deputy from Florida who, who fled to Russia. And his name is John Mark Dugan. This guy runs 150 websites in this country, and they are meant to look like American websites. They've got titles like the New York News Daily, and the Boston Times and the DC Weekly, and you think, oh, okay, I, I've heard of the, but you haven't. They're all built to look like American websites. They're all built to look like um, legitimate sources of information. But you've got to be very careful and curate what you're looking at, because if you're if you're getting an article, particularly for those of you over the age of sixty. If you are following the news on Facebook, please, for the love of Jesus, stop. You're going to have to curate your own sources a little bit. Your friend's cousin's brother-in-law who sent the article um, from, from the, the Tampa Glorious Redeemer Herald um, that says Vladimir's, Vladimir Putin has cured cancer and Zelensky uh, bought three 400-foot yachts. When you see that kind of stuff, I know it seems like um, you you should be able to just like filter it mentally, but it's a lot harder than you think. Disinformation is persuasive. Um, it is AI generated more and more. It is becoming AI generated in ways that drill down into your demographics to tell you a story that you will personally believe. And uh, you know, look, you can still generally rely broadly. You don't have to agree with them all the time with major mainstream publications and outlets, okay? They generally still have some capacity for journalistic uh, integrity. There is one, however, that you must not, and that is Fox. Um, Fox is, as you may have seen from the articles this weekend about Rupert Murdoch fighting with his family, that when he dies, he wants to make sure that Fox remains the right-wing agitprop network that it is today. He wants to ensure that it remains um, dedicated to this nationalist, populist um, belief set that has driven his right-wing ideology for his whole life. Rupert Murdoch from the grave will still be running Fox. And so you need to take them with a massive grain of salt. They are intellectually dishonest. They are journalistically vacant. The few, few, few people who still practice journalism at Fox are a dying species. Um the opinion section of Fox runs the network. The, the showmanship section of Fox runs the network. It sure as hell 
is not, um, you know, Brett Bear. You know, the, the, like I said, the few, the few normies who are here still at, or who are there still at Fox are a dying species. Okay, next question. Was the assassination real or fake? One, it wasn't an assassination. It was an attempted murder. Um, kids are Republican from a Republican family. There's Trump signs in the yard. His dad's a libertarian. There's no sign whatsoever. The story about him donating to an Act Blue account is false. This kid was a lost boy. Okay. This kid was a lost boy. They are the saddest creatures on earth. They are, they are, they are truly, 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 um, and I hate this word, but I'm going to use it. They are truly victims in a world where young men are isolated, where young men are largely denigrated, where young men are broken, where young men become in a, trapped in a matrix of video games and online validation and online chat rooms and discords and telegram channels that don't have their best interest at heart. These young men, like like Thomas Crooks, they are broken. Their souls are broken. Their 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 lives are disordered, and it reflects a lot of things in our society that are wrong. It reflects a lot of a lot of pathologies in American life that are that are and and Western life that are broken. It reflects a lot of of darkness in our culture. Um, and so it wasn't an assassination attempt. It was an attempted murder, but he was also searching for Joe Biden's schedule. And, and sadly, and I've, I've said this a couple of times now, this is the same kind of boy that if he wasn't on that roof that day, would have walked into a synagogue like tree of life would have walked into a church like Dylan roof did would have walked into a, 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 a school like as in Uvalde and, and as in Nashville and as in Sandy Hook, this kid was broken. He wanted to be famous for one minute of one of his life. He wanted to run up a score for one minute of his life. And he did, he did. Um, so it wasn't an assassination attempt. And I, I will say I've been calling it the battle of wounded ear um, as I predicted and expected Trump turned it into a circus, um, wearing the ear tampon for, or the ear maxi pad for several days. Um, and now there are photographs of the miraculously healed ear. I, I have to tell you, he wasn't wrong when he said the ear is a very vascular part of the body. It bleeds a lot. It does. Um, but I got it. I, 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 folks, the attempt to turn him into a, a national murder on this if this was a politically motivated attempt, we'd be having a totally different conversation right now. And I don't want political violence to strike anybody. I, I, I want justice for people who are bad people to be carried out with the rule of law, which is where Trump deserves to have justice applied to him. Um, so no, look, it, it was a real kid with a real gun who took a real shot. He cost the lives uh, of uh, the life of one man in the audience and severely injured several other folks. Um, but it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't, you know, a Republican plot to make Trump look like a hero and it wasn't a democratic plot to get Trump killed. I mean, we, we really need to step back from the cliff on that sort of stuff in this country. Okay. Next question. Uh, RFK Jr. Helps or hurts now that Kamala Harris is the nominee. <clears throat> we don't have a ton of data yet. however. What we are seeing is that, and again, we'll know more soon. We've got more polling in the field. A lot of the Democrats who were hesitant to be with Joe Biden have come back for, for Vice President Harris. The Democrats are coming home, folks. That means people who were mad at Joe Biden for every reason under the sun. Progressives, they're coming home. African Americans, they're coming home. Hispanic voters, they're coming home. A lot of those people were not parked with Donald Trump. They were parked with RFK. So you've seen RFK's numbers come down a bit. And you've seen Trump's numbers come down a bit. And the bite for Trump now from RFK 
it used to be like 55 45 um coming out of trump and it was always a little more hurting trump than biden in, in, in the last four months maybe but now <clears throat> it's about 75 25 hurting trump rfk is a sink now a safety valve for disaffected uh conspiracy theory oriented republicans and you're welcome to them <laughs> bob enjoy um but those folks have gone um they, they've gone from representing about 20 percent of the electorate now down to about seven percent of the electorate this race the fundamentals have really shifted again <clears throat> as i record this on monday we have been where we're at for one week into the campaign we have 99 days to go as i'm recording this and and look I want to say one more thing. RFK is going to be on the ballot in a lot of states. Um, you know, he's flirted with getting out and endorsing Trump. Um, even if he does that, I don't think it helps Trump because he's still going to be on the ballot in a lot of states. So th that that plan, uh, and if you're listening, Donald, I know you have your research goons to listen, um, that that brilliant plan by your friend Steve Bannon, the one who's in prison at, F at Federal Correctional Institute Danbury in Connecticut right now, um, that brilliant plan to have RFK um, break Joe Biden first in the Democratic primary uh, and then to run as a spoiler independent. Brilliant. Super great move. So, folks, that is all for this, uh, this episode of The Enemies List. There's a new format slightly. I kind of like doing it. If you like do me doing this this way, send me an email, info at therickwilson.com. Um, and the enemies list will be back with the next episode. We've got a special guest coming up and some great guests lined up in the immediate future. But I do like the Q&A stuff. Send me, the, send me your questions. Uh, we'll ask the best ones on the air. Maybe we'll send you some Resolute swag. Who knows? Um, and do me a favor. All these podcasts that we do, all these YouTube videos that we do, um, we're all slaves to the algorithm. And it would be a great favor to me if you could like, subscribe, click the bell. If you're on Apple Podcasts, please click uh, follow. All these things that that help build up our ability to get the message out to more and more people. Um, because as they're searching for, for podcasts that engage in smart political dialogue, if they're searching for, when they're searching for podcasts that, that, that aren't afraid to ask hard questions of people. If they're searching for podcasts that are fighting for the pro-democracy side of the fight, we hope they'll choose the enemies list and you can help us do that. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next time.